welcome students welcome to our social class and we have been learning about uh, the situations prevailed in the war during the first and second world wars in the beginning we learned about the situations that happened in the 20th century and how we call why we call this century as the age of extremes next we learned about uh, the destruction the facts about the two world wars so what happened in the world how many people died in the wars and later on we learned about the impact of uh, the industrial revolution and also how this uh, big countries rich countries in europe they try to dominate the entire world especially in france and in africa and in asia continent so how they started exploiting their uh, power exploiting the poor people and expanding their power in the smaller countries or poor countries like asia and africa later we learned about the power blocks so how the nation states were formed in europe about germany unification about italy unification so all these countries they formed into nation states so what are nation states i explained in the previous class so people following the same language people following the same culture people uh, thinking that they belong they descend from the same culture and heritage so they try to form into some groups and they created some boundaries and uh, they created the nation states and these nation states they came together with some understanding with some common ideas and with some common benefits and these nation states they formed into power blocks and these power blocks they led to the uh, war camps they worked as the war camps and finally the euro became or uh, divided into so many powers or so many groups so we learned until then so next so what are the so how these things and how these changes are affecting the world uh, affecting the world and how these changes are leading to the world wars so let us see what are the uh, causes that are leading to the world war so in the last class also I explained that there are two kinds of causes so what are those two kinds of uh, causes so one is the immediate cause so one is the immediate cause so what we can see what we can expect in our uh, uh, in the world is called immediate effect that that can be seen is called the immediate effect so example you feel you get the fever so fever is the immediate cause but internally so many changes may be happening in the body so those things cannot be seen with our eyes so those things cannot be uh, seen or affected by us but internally we find some changes in our body and finally all these changes may affect in the form of a fever so you can see the fever but not the internal changes understand in the same way so many changes are happening in the world so many groups are forming uh, are forming in the world so many countries are becoming friends and so many countries are becoming the enemies but ultimately we can't see any of these changes and any of these changes are uh, uh, not showing any effect on the world so we find that we feel that nothing is happening in the world but we can see the effect only when some immediate cause is seen to all of us so the three the uh, when we talk about uh, world war these world wars are also can also be uh, divided into two forms the causes of the world wars can be the causes of the world wars can be seen in two forms so one is uh, the immediate effect so one is the immediate effect and another one is long term long term effect so one is the immediate effect and another one is the long term effect for example if i want to uh, make it clear so you all are preparing hard for the entire year for the whole year you sit before the books and the work very hard but nobody can find your hard work nobody can find your difficulties nobody can find your struggle so what we all can see we can see you writing the exams we can see you are you getting the first rank and we can see you getting the certificate so writing the effect is the immediate effect 
and how can you write the exam without preparation without hard work we can't write the f we can't write our uh, exams and get the first strength but all these things but the entire process should continue for the whole year so it is a long term process it is a long term effect so the long term effect or long term process can be seen in your uh, final exam okay in the same way the uh, the causes of the world wars can be divided into two types one is uh, the immediate cause and another one is the long term process so all those long term processes they lead to the immediate effect okay so let us see what is the immediate cause for the first world war and second world war okay is it clear up to here now coming to the uh, immediate cause immediate cause of the first world war so we can see this effect on in 1919 so we all know that the first world war began in 1914 and continued up to 1918 so why do we call it as a world war so why it is called a world war i told you in the previous class so every part of this world every part of this world right from a big nation to a small nation right from india to china every country from all corners of the world they participated in this world war so some countries they participated directly and some countries they participated indirectly whatever it may be the reason and whatever may be the cause almost all the countries in the world participated in the war that's why we call them as world wars so now let us see what is the cause of the first world war it started in 1914 28 june when it was started it was started in 28 june 1914 it is the starting point of the first world war and what is the reason the reason is that in but there is a country called uh, Austria there is a country called Austria and there is a small country called Serbia so two countries there are Cyprus and countries Austria is a very powerful country and we learned in the ninth class about the uh, battle or fight between uh, Austria and uh, Persia so Austria is a very powerful country very big country and very influential country in Europe and Serbia is a very small nation so what happened on 28th june 1914 so art jew ferdinand so he is the princess of uh, princess of uh, uh, austria so art jew ferdinand uh, uh, a serbian fanatic a serbian fanatic fanatic means a kind of aggressive person a person who is having more uh, uh, who is having uh, uh, more interest on his nation a eh, that fellow a fan of uh, serbia he murdered he murdered art jew ferdinand the, the the king of uh, uh, austria was murdered by the serbian fan unmali in telugu we call him as a unma that fellow who know what he is doing so that fellow simply by keeping his country's interest by feeling that the austrians are dominating serbians the austria is trying to control serbia he is he was unable to uh, feel it he was, he was unable to control it and that's why uh, serbian fanatic he is asked uh, to fight in on on 28 june 1914 so we all know Uh, when the king is murdered so immediately the king, the country will try to attack the other nation understand so suppose if something happened so recently some of our soldiers were killed by the uh, china soldiers so immediately what our country did we prepared ourselves to fight with china ready right? nobody can spare it so it is if you don't if you won't do like that it is a uh, it is some problem with us so it created some problems with the dutch then here austria also gave a warning to serbia hey you are family you are person killed our fedina uh, he killed our king so that's why within 24 hours you should give us explanation or you should give, you should say 
they are sorry or something. So like that, Austria gave a serious warning to Serbia. If you won't give any reply to our letter, we are going to attack your nation. So Serbia is going to be attacked by Austria. So this is a severe warning given by Austria to Serbia. So we feel that, we think that Serbia is a very small country, that's why immediately that will fell on the uh, feet of Austria and Austria will excuse him and there, there won't be any problem like that. So Austria is a very small nation, that's why there won't be any problem with the, sorry, Serbia is a very small nation, that's why Austria can easily attack Serbia and Austrians can expand their kingdom. So like that we all expect like that. So though it is small, though, it, though Serbia is a very small country, the background of uh, Serbia is very big. Previously, previously to this incident, Serbians made an agreement with uh, the European countries like Britain, France and other nations. So we learned about the power blocks. Yes, do you remember it? Yes. So we learned about the power blocks as per the agreement. Serbia already joined its hands with Britain. They made some agreements with Britain. So what is that agreement? Suppose if any country is trying to attack any of our member countries, suppose X, Y, Z or three countries. Suppose if X, Y, Z are attacked by A or B or C. Understand? So all these three countries should come together. All the three countries should cooperate with each other. All the three countries should share their army, share their weapons and protect the other two countries. So other two countries should protect the third country. This is what they uh, agreed before this uh, incident. So not only these countries but as per the power blocks, as per the groups, most of the countries made their agreements like that. So here what happened? Serbia already joined its hands with uh, Britain, UK, UK means Britain and UK, France, Russia. So all these countries, with all these three countries, Serbia made an agreement. So what according to this agreement the other European countries should do? The other European countries means the countries like UK, France, F for France and all for Russia. So what these three countries should do? So they should come and stand before Serbia to protect the interest of the Serbians. So Austrians felt that Serbia is a very small nation. Suppose if we give some warning to Serbia, in the next moment they come and fall on our feet. But this never happened. This thing was not happened. So our, uh, Serbia immediately went to UK. They requested them, oh, as per our agreement, you all should help us. So today, Austrians are trying to attack us. They are going to, uh, they are going to invade us. So please help me. So immediately, UK came and joined its hands with Serbia. Yes, I am with you. UK, UK means Britain came and joined with Serbia. Immediately, France also came and stand behind uh, Britain. And Russia also came and stand, joined its hands with the Serbia. So like that, so Serbia is supported by UK, France and Russia. So these groups, they prepared to attack Austria. So if you attack Serbia, we all, you should attack all of us. So you remember that you should attack all of us. So Serbia is not a uh, single country or it is not a... It is not a separate country, so we all are supporting Serbia. Then what the Austrians do? So they become alone. Already Austrians made an agreement with some other nations in Europe. So this is what happened. Austrians also joined its hands with some other countries. So they joined their hands with uh, Germany and Italy. So in the previous class I told that Germany was defeated in the First World War. Okay, Britain was, uh, uh, Britain won in the First World War. So when there is a fight between Austria and Serbia, it's a small battle, it's a small issue between Austria and the Serbia, why these countries participated? So how can you declare that Germany is a loser and Britain is a 
winner so what is the relation or what is the cause of these two countries to join and uh, fight in the first world war this is the cause so we call them as alliances friends groups so serbia was supported by uk france and russia and immediately russia uh, austria requested uh, germany and italy to support him so that's why now here also two groups are formed supporters of austria and supporters of serbia so in the beginning it it began it began like that first world war began like that so afterwards serbia went away from the scene and austria also went away from the scene two rivals britain and germany they continued the war and faced the consequences of the first world war so this is the immediate cause of the first world war one more very important question from public point of view so what is the immediate cause of first world war so the austrian the austrian king ferdinand was murdered by a serbian fanatic when 28 june 28 june 1914 so this is the immediate cause of the first world war so like that the first world war began in 1914 continued up to 19 i hope you all understood this concept so if if not so once again you repeat the video and try to understand the concept suppose if you have any doubts you can directly put your questions in the whatsapp next important concept so now we learned about the first world war causes and now we are going to learn about the causes of the second world war so what are the causes of the second world war so i told you in the previous class that germany once again germany is uh, um, is the main is a main playing a main role in the second world war also so especially in germany the ruler of germany at the time was uh, hitler hitler played an important role in leading the germany germans towards the second world war understand So, uh, Second World War was started in 1939. When it was started, September 1939. September first, uh, 1939. So now, what is the result or what is the cause of the Second World War? So for many years, Hitler is having, Hitler is demanding the Poland. Hitler is demanding Poland to hand over the dancing court to the Germans. Okay, so you give this court to Germans. So Poland is a very small country. So you don't have any support, and uh, we are very powerful nation. So hand over your uh, dancing court. Very important one. So you hand over your dancing court to uh, Germans. So like that repeatedly, he has been making many, many, many. So it is not a request. Hitler is a dictator. Dictators they never request other others. So this fellow is demanding Poland to hand over dancing court to Germans. But every time the Poland is uh, rejecting the offer, or rejecting the demand of uh, Hitler. Okay. But on September one, nineteen thirty-nine. So this fellow is not listening to my words. So after all, Poland is a very small country. And this Poland is located between the two boundaries of. Uh, so it is located between two boundaries of Germany. On this side we find Germany. On the other side also we find Germany. Between these two boundaries, the Poland is located. So it is very easy. So it is very easy. It is a small military act. Military act means just by sending a uh, hundred uh, or two hundred soldiers, we can attack Poland. and get control over the country so it's a very small military operation it may take not more than one or two days to occupy this country so very easily i can attack the poland and get control over dancing court so like that this fellow thought that thought like that and declared a war on poland so what's there so within within few seconds i'm going to uh, Occupy Poland and uh, get control over dancing. It's a small, it's a matter of a few days or one or two days. So like that, he thought and the one day on September first, nineteen thirty-nine, he declared war on 
Poland. So Poland is a very small nation, I do agree, but it is supported by two countries, Britain and France. Britain and France. Guess what happened in the First World War? How Serbia got support from Britain? In the same way, here also Poland got uh, support from Britain and France. Why? Because already Poland made an agreement with it, made a defense pact. Defense pact means, suppose if any country is attacking Poland, the rest of the countries should support and uh, uh, protect the rights of Poland. That is called defense pact. Okay. So Britain and France, they uh, entered the Second World War. And once again, Germany got support from uh, Austria, Italy and other nations. So like that here also, the world is split into two, uh, the world is split into two groups, supporters of Germany, supporters of Britain. So like that, this is the immediate cause of the Second World War. What is the immediate cause here? Attack on Poland by Hitler. So attack on Poland by Germans for the sake of getting or con getting control over dancing court. So that uh, these two are called the immediate causes of the First World War. I hope you all understood these points. So if they are not clear for you, you can uh, uh, raise your doubts in the next class. I will try to clarify your doubts. So I think you, I hope you all understood up to here. So then we can go for the next concept. Okay, shall I go? Okay. So now we are going to learn about uh, the long-term causes. So I told you about the immediate causes. I explained about the immediate causes till now. And now I am going to explain the long-term causes. So these long-term causes cannot be seen. Long-term causes. So these long-term causes cannot be seen in the form of a war or in the form of a uh, in the form of a, uh, attack or something. So these are internal causes. So just uh, uh, how the uh, how the volcano the eruption of the volcano may be called as an immediate cause. The eruption of the volcano may be the immediate cause. Internally inside the volcano we find the molding up of uh, lava, magma. So internally we see, internally we see the magma forming or developing like anything. So we cannot see the lava or magma inside when it is inside the uh, volcano. But we can see only the explosion of a volcano mountain. Never say not volcano mountain. I think. So when the eruption can be compared with the immediate cause, the internal, the internal changes in the volcano mountain can be called as long-term causes. So all these long-term causes are leading to the immediate cause. All the long-term causes are leading to the inter, uh, immediate causes. Understand? So now we are going to learn one by one about uh, the long-term causes. Let me explain uh, uh, the long-term causes. First one is aggressive. Aggressive. What is the first one? Aggressive nationalism. The first one is aggressive nationalism. And next one is imperialism. Second one is second one is imperialism and third one is secret. Third one is secret alliances. And fourth one is militarism. Okay, so I will try to explain one by one to you. First one is aggressive nationalism. So what is meant by aggressiveness? So aggressiveness is nothing but the angriness. So I am very aggressive. I am very uh, angry upon you. 
So how do you express your anger on others? So by throwing on something or by beating something or by scolding something. So like that we uh, we uh, show or we expose our aggressiveness towards others. So this aggressiveness is combined with the nationalism. So what is nationalism? So nationalism is nothing but uh, the feeling of uh, one thing. So I we, we we belong to India. India is my country. All Indians are my brothers and sisters. I love my country. This type of patriotism is called nationalism. So we all love our country, don't you? So I love my country. You love your country. We all love our country. So developing love towards one's nation is called nationalism. Okay. So this aggressiveness. When it is combined with nationalism, it is a positive impulse. It is a positive thing. So, is it not a positive thing? Subhash Chandra Bose, Bhagat Singh, Alur Sita Ram Raju, Gandhi, Nehru, and many of our great, great patriots, they fought against the Britishers to get independence to our nation. If there is no aggressiveness, so if there is no aggressiveness combined with the nationalism. There is no question of getting independence to India. Loving their nation is a positive, is a positive thing. So we all should develop that nationalism, and we all should have a bit of aggressiveness towards our nation. Suppose if somebody is scolding our country, ah, uh, what is there in India? India is a poor nation. Like that, if anybody is scolding our nation, so immediately we should say a word against them. Or immediately we should react against their words. Otherwise, there is no use of, it, of course. So aggressiveness, aggressiveness combined with nationalism is a positive impulse. So it should be accepted. It should be encouraged. But so what is the defect is? So that aggressiveness should not be uh, dominated by other things. So aggressiveness should be there, but it should not dominate your uh, feelings. So I can say that my country is very powerful country. My country is a very good country. My country is the richest country. Like that, I can talk about my country. Nothing wrong in it. So nobody will say that I am talking wrong. But I should not say my country is my country alone is a rich country. My country alone is a powerful nation. Other countries are stupid. Other countries are my enemies. So that is wrong. You praise yourself. So you can say, "I am a very intelligent student," but you should not say that others are not intelligent like you. So we should not say others are fools. So you can talk greatly about yourself. The same way, I can say I can talk greatly about my nations, but at the same time, I should not develop enmity on other nations. So that is the main problem here. But what happened during this aggressive nationalism stage? So people started, and some leaders started provoking the people. Provoking means rachapotan. They started motivating the people like anything with their powerful speeches, especially uh, Hitler in Germany and uh, Mussolini in uh, Mussolini in Italy. So these two powerful people, they started motivating and inspiring their people with their powerful speeches. Germany, Germany is a very powerful nation. Italy is a very powerful nation. Other countries are uh, not as powerful as uh, as we. So they are our uh, enemies. So like that, they started uh, creating some enmity. And people also, after listening to their speeches, they thought that Germany is a powerful nation. And all other uh, countries, especially these countries, Britain, France, these countries are trying to dominate us, and they are trying to uh, they are trying to destroy us. So Britain is the uh, enemy for Germany. France is the enemy enemy for Germany. Russia is enemy for Germany. So like that, people also started developing hatred against uh, the other nations, and they started feeling pride about their nation. So feeling pride is not a mistake, but feeling the other countries are enemies to them is a blunder or great mistake. That that's what happened in uh, uh, aggressive nationalism state. Of course, of course. So Bismarck, Bismarck bought uh, unification for uh, 
Germany only by developing some aggressive nationalism. No doubt. So Bismarck, the Iron Man of uh, Germany. So he what he united united he uh, united Germany only by developing aggressive nationalism. Gandhi ji, Nehru ji, and many of the uh, national free, uh, freedom fighters they too motivated the people through aggressive nationalism. So that is an important thing. So that will help us to get united. Aggressive nationalism will help us to unite. So we all can live together. So India is my country. I feel like that. You also feel that India is your country. Others also feel that India is my country. And all the Indians are feeling that India is my country. So that is also a kind of nationalism. So when others are uh, trying to attack us, when China is trying to attack India, or when Pakistan is trying to attack India, we all are giving solidarity to our uh, Indians, to our soldiers, to our government. Manandra Kodam, we are standing behind our soldiers and uh, uh, we, say we are uh, encouraging them. So that is also an aggressive nationalism. So aggressive nationalism, when it is uh, for your development, it is good. But when you think others are bad, so Italy, Italy also got united only through aggressive nationalism, feeling of aggressive nationalism. Garibaldi, Masini, so all these people, they united the people by developing the concept of uh, uh, nationalism among themselves. But the same Italy, but the same Germans, they created aggressive nationalism among the people of Germans and Italians and they led to the two world wars. So this aggressive nationalism, when it is extending the limits, when it is crossing the limits, that is a negative, that will show a negative impact on the world. So here what happened, Hitler, he, Hitler and uh, in, uh, what is the party started by Hitler? Nazism. So in the last class I explained you. Nazism, Nazism of Hitler, Nazi party, Nazism, Nazism of uh, Hitler and Fascism, FA, yes, Fascism. So Hitler, Nazism, Fascism by Italy. So these two countries, they motivated the uh, people like anything and created hatred against Britain, France and other European countries. And in one day, the fascism, the fascists, the fascists of Italy, they created a situation. So what kind of, uh, what kind of situation they created? So if you want your country to be developed, if you want the world to be developed, so it can be developed only by Nazism. Hitler, only Hitler can lead the world in the right direction. So he created a Brahma in Telugu we say. He created some imagination among the people that Nazism can only lead the world with the support of fascism. So we only, we both can create a new world and we can eliminate the uh, we can eliminate the evils of Britain, France and Italy. So we, Britain, France, Russia and other countries. So like that, so these two countries, they created aggressive nationalism among the people and resulted in the First World War and Second World War. So what will happen? So when the Germans, they talk about the Britishers, when they think about the Britishers, when they think about the French people, they become very aggressive and they wanted to kill them and they wanted to destroy their nation. So in the next chapter, we are going to learn clearly how Hitler motivated the people and inspired the people against the Britishers and the French people. So this is one of the causes. And what is the next one? Imperialism. And next one is secret alliances. And next one is the militarism. So we shall learn in detail. We shall learn in detail about the remaining uh, uh, long term causes in the next lesson. So until then, you revise the concept. Already some of you are having the textbooks with you. Suppose if you are not having any textbook, you simply download from the internet. It's free of cost. The government is providing textbooks for all of us. They're free of cost. So you just 
download the suppose if it is not possible for you so otherwise textbooks are already distributed for 10th class students so you verify you read this lesson once again and note down the important points so what should you remember so you read the lesson from the beginning so from the first page so already i taught the one two three four pages till now i taught only four pages i think i have uh, explained the lesson somewhat detail to you so you read the lesson and point by point line by line and whatever you feel is important suppose if you feel that uh, 1939 first second world war 1914 first world war so you write it as a blank you write it as a bit in your uh, uh, books and try to submit me in your whatsapp okay so with this i am going to revise uh, uh, i am going to stop this lesson let me uh, complete this le lesson let me revise what i have explained so far to you so we learned about uh, the causes of the first world war and the causes of the second world war and what are the what is the cause of the first world war death of or due fetinan on 28 june 1914 by sfbn and serbia got support from britain france and in the same way austria also got support from germany and italy so with that a small war in the first world war uh, formed in the uh, was the first world war uh, was started so you may say that britain participated sir france participated in the first world war sir so how can you say it as the first world war because when britain participated in the first world war means all the countries which were occupied by the britain were also participated in the first world war countries occupied by france were also participated in the first world war in the same way countries occupied by russia countries occupied by germany so it became a world war and what is the reason or what is the cause for the second world war 1939 selfishness of hitler what is the selfishness to occupy danzig fort and poland from poland poland was supported by britain and france and uh, germany got support from as usual from uh, italy and other austria and other nations so this also became a second world war so in the previous class i told why the second world war is more destructive than the first world war so once again you revise this concept so every concept is interlinked with each other the, the present concept is in, interlinked with the previous concept the previous concept is may be linked with some other concept so that's why you read it in a logical manner you arrange the topics in a logical manner and you try to write everything in your uh, notebooks so one thing i tell you so so many questions from our 10th 10th class a uh, 10th uh, class and 9th class subjects were asked in many competitive exams so they are very important for your future also so learn it with interest so we have many many facilities you can even uh, what you say you can even uh, take the help of google so that will also give you, that will also give you lot of information and you can expand your knowledge and try to flourish in your uh, future life so with this i am going to end up today's lesson so you revise the lesson and write down the important points and one important thing is uh, don't come out of your houses always wear the mask if it is necessary if if you want to come outside if it is necessary then you wear a mask and don't put your lives in risk so we shall meet in the next class until then happy days for you